Greetings to you all, and welcome to Lore of the Cards, the series that looks to find the lore hidden within your Hearthstone deck. Hearthstone's first glorious expansion, Goblins vs Gnomes, has been released, and to celebrate that, December, and um, probably a little bit of January, will be Goblins vs Gnomes month, exploring the lore behind a few of the cards in the expansion. If you guys have any suggestions for what cards you'd like to see, just let me know in the comments here, or on the Reddit discussion. So, the first card is my choice. In Warcraft lore terms, his story is short, but he represents everything that the Alliance stand for. He is honourable, noble of heart, and now is the master of one of the greatest armies that Azeroth has seen. Bolvar Fordragon. The art of the card is by a man with the alias Tooth. Again, it's an artist I can't find out too much about. This is becoming a more regular occurrence than I'd like it to be. He does have a Deviant art page you can check out, and a blog, sadly written in a language I can't read. And my browser doesn't seem to want to translate it. Stupid Google. Tooth creates beautifully dark images that have pops of colour to them, a style I personally find really appealing. Tooth has produced several Warcraft pieces, one of the best goblin sapper images you'll see on the internet, Varian Rin, that douche Garrosh hell screams head on a pike, <laughs> I really like this guy, and of course, Bolvar for Dragon. Nothing is known about Bolvar's early life or his childhood. He is deeply loyal to the Kingdom of Stormwind, so it may be safe to assume that he was born there, but I can't say that with certainty. He is a simple man who through grit and determination became one of Stormwind's greatest soldiers with a strong sense of justice. At some point within his training, he learned to wield the powers of the Holy Light, becoming a paladin of the Alliance. The first time Bolvar appears in Warcraft lore, he is the Regent of Stormwind, ruling over one of the most powerful human kingdoms in all of Azeroth, following the disappearance of its king, Varian Rin. After the fallout of the Third War, Varian was travelling to meet Jaina Proudmoore. The Third War refers to the Burning Legion's second invasion of Azeroth. The Legion is a malevolent force that looks to bring chaos and destruction to all worlds, not just Azeroth, and they nearly succeeded in bringing Azeroth to its knees. A creation of the Legion, the Lich King, weakened the world for their coming with the Undead Scourge, a force of undead horrors whose numbers grew with each enemy they butchered. The kingdoms of Azeroth in disarray, the Legion struck, but thanks to the combined forces of the races of Azeroth, the Legion were thwarted. One of their most powerful commanders, Archimond, falling in the final battle. Varian's trip was for diplomatic reasons, to discuss the relations between the Alliance and their long-time enemies, the Horde. Jaina would no doubt be painting the Horde in a positive light, as she had worked closely with Warchief Thrall during the Burning Legion's attack, and the two had become close friends. Varian has always distrusted Orcs, since his father was killed by a half-Orc spy, who he trusted implicitly. This meeting, however, would never take place, as Varian would be kidnapped on his way to the city of Theramore. His kidnappers were the Defias Brotherhood. This group of thugs and thieves were actually the master architects that had rebuilt the city of Stormwind in the wake of the Alliance's victory over the Horde in the Second War. However, when the job was done, they felt they were not paid sufficiently for their services. Thus, the Brotherhood were born, and they would be a bane upon Stormwind for many years to come. You can find out more about them in my video on Edwin Van Cleef. With the King's capture, High Lord Bolvar became Regent Lord of Stormwind, and he vowed, as the Kingdom's temporary ruler, to find the missing King Varian at any cost. Around the same time, a woman named Lady Katerina Prestor became a royal advisor, and advised the High Lord to have Varian's ten-year-old son, Anduin Rin, crowned as King of Stormwind. Bolvar would in reality still be the ruler of Stormwind, but if his beloved king returned or Anduin reached the age of succession, he would step aside and let the bloodline of Rin continue. Bolvar looked after Stormwind as best he could but he often deferred to Prestor's counsel. 
perhaps too readily, as under his rule many chinks appeared within the armour of the human kingdom's defences. The Defias Brotherhood were able to establish a firm foothold in Westfall right on Stormwind's doorstep. Knowing that King Varian still lived, Bolvar centralised Stormwind's armies, urged on by Prestor. This was partly so that the army could quickly respond if their king was found, and so that they could protect Anduin. Prestor had been able to convince Bolvar that Anduin would likely be the kidnapper's next target. When an opportunity arose for Bolvar to get his king back, he seized it, a group of Naga offering the return of Stormwind's king for a hefty ransom. Bolvar did not care how Varian had ended up in the clutches of the Naga instead of the Defias, he just wanted his king back and paid the ransom. It was suspected by several Stormwind citizens that a recent tax hike had been implemented to pay this ransom, which meant Varian would return home to a mixed reception. Upon his return home, the positive outweighed the negative, the people hoping that with the return of their king, Stormwind would see better days. The Defias being driven away, the Blackrock Orcs that had been encroaching in their territory being eradicated, and an end to ridiculous taxes. Bolvar and Anduin, who had formed a very strong friendship in the king's absence, immediately noticed that the king did not appear to be himself. Bolvar and Anduin immediately tried to turn his concerns to the plights of his people. Anduin taking issue with the recent raise in taxes, and Bolvar urging the king to mobilise his armies to put an end to the Black Rock threat. The king seemed unconcerned, and even bored with these trivialities, preferring to ignore the needs of his people, and set up hunts and bulls at the urging of Katarina. The Defias had recently been winning over support from Stormwind's civilians due to this flagrant spending, and this was only strengthening their hold. On the day of his hunt, Varian and Bolvar met with Magni Bronzebeard, king of the dwarven capital Ironforge. The night before, Anduin had urged his father to hear Magni out, as they were currently fighting the Dark Iron Dwarves, enemies to both kingdoms. The Dark Irons sought to capture the Thandal Span, an important bridge that helped trade in the Dwarven Kingdom, and allowed the Dwarves easy travel to the humans of Lordaeron. At the meeting, Bolvar once again raised his concerns about the Black Rock Orcs with Magni. In contrast to Varian, Magni listened to Bolvar, but identified the Dark Irons as the greater threat, since the Orcs were fighting an already lost battle. The meeting was interrupted by Katarina, who saw Magni's wish to destroy the Dark Irons as a personal feud, as he believed his daughter was kidnapped by them and forced into marrying their Emperor. An insulted Magni promptly took his leave, Bolvar trying to calm the Dwarven King, understanding that Varian did not seem himself, something that Magni more than agreed with. During the hunt following this meeting, Anduin almost met with a grisly end. Anduin's horse became spooked, causing him to lose control and fall off a cliff. The horse fell to its death, but Varian was able to react quickly enough that he was able to grab hold of his son. As he held on to his son, Varian was overcome by vivid memories of his capture, that up until this point he had not remembered. He saw the Defias carting him away. He saw himself strapped down, tortured, with strange ritual markings around him, and he saw the Naga attack the Defias. Anduin now believed that this man was at least in part his father, and Bolvar started questioning the king on his memories to see if he could find out more. Before Bolvar was able to find out anything relevant, Prestor intervened, touching the king on the cheek and saying how awful the king's memories were. Bolvar noticed that with her touch, the king once again became befuddled, as if bewitched. He began to suspect foul play. In reality, Prestor had been using this same magic on Bolvar when he ruled, in order to get what she wanted and make Bolvar make the poor decisions that he did. Foul play was confirmed when a second Varian, accompanied by the Hearthstone hero Valera Sanguinar amongst others, rode into Stormwind, and the depth of Lady Katarina Prestor's deviousness revealed. King Varian had been split into two people, 
his charismatic, fun-loving side which currently sat on the throne, and his fighting spirit. Split by the daughter of the Black Dragon aspect, Deathwing, Onyxia, who currently operated under the guise of Lady Katarina Prestor. Anixia had planned to split the king's personalities, kill his fighting spirit, and rule over the kingdom of Stormwind using her powerful magics to subtly manipulate those that would stand against her. However, before killing Varian's fighting spirit, she and her defias allies were interrupted by the Naga, which allowed the side of Varian that would come to be called Logosh to escape. Revealed, Anixia transformed into her dragon form, and several Stormwind guards transformed into their dragon spawn forms. Bolvar rushed to the defense of his beloved city, slaughtering several dragon spawn, but was unable to stop Anixia from capturing Anduin before she retreated. Varian and Logosh agreed to join forces and save their son, while Bolvar was left to help Stormwind stabilize. Logosh and Varian were successful and re-merged with each other to become the complete King Varian Rin. Varian and his kingdom were not given much reprieve. Shortly after dispatching Anixia, the Lich King awakened and sent surprise attacks to the cities of the Hordes Orgrimmar and Stormwind. Bolvar aided his people yet again in defending his kingdom, and after a successful defence, was sent to Northrum by Varian to command the Alliance's armies in a counter-attack against the Lich King, on the Lich King's home continent of Northrend. In Northrend, Bolvar aided Alliance players in World of Warcraft, defeat the Lich, Thelzan the Duskbringer. The Lich used to be Father Inigo Montoy, who once combated the Lich King's right-hand man, Kel'Thuzad. But when presented with an opportunity to end Kel'Thuzad, Montoy saved his life, and was seduced by the power that the Lich King could give him. When revealed, Thalzan paralysed his enemies with fear. If not for Bolvar's arrival, all those men would have been slaughtered. Bolvar confronted the Lich with his mortal name and freed his comrades. The Lich, angered by the use of his old name, attacked and was ended by Bolvar and his allies. After Thalzan's death, Bolvar made the bold move to attack Angrathar, the Wrathgate, the back door to the Lich King's base of operations, Icecrown Citadel. The Horde also joined the Alliance in the fight against the Scourge, led by Joranosh Saurfang, son of the Orcish hero Varok Saurfang. For all the 
the lives you've stolen, traitor! Boldly stated, but there is nothing you can... What? <laughs> Did you think we had forgotten? Did you think we had forgiven? Behold now, the terrible vengeance of the Forsaken! Sylvanas. Death to the Scourge! And death to the Living! is the hour of the Forsaken. We're finished. No escape for any of us. The Forsaken that attacked the armies and the Lich King did not attack by order of their queen, Sylvanas. They were a splinter group led by the Dreadlord Varomathras and the Apothecary Putress. Enraged by the death of one of his greatest friends, Varian, who blamed the Horde for the attack, led an attack on the Undercity to wipe the Horde from the face of the Eastern Kingdoms and managed to kill Putress. On the opposite side, Sylvanas and Warchief Thrall sought to retake Undercity from the traitors and defeated Varimathras. The two armies met, but Jane the Proudmoor was able to prevent any further bloodshed by teleporting the Alliance out of the Horde's retaken Undercity. It would later be discovered that Bolvar had not perished in the battle for the Wrathgate. When the Red Dragons purged the undead with their flames, they in fact saved Bolvar's life. Since Alex Straza and her flight are attuned with the life forms of Azeroth, their flame has life-giving properties. It can be used to bring those destined for death back from the very edge. This is exactly what happened with Bolvar, but the Red Dragon's flames still burnt, leaving Bolvar's body deformed, his skin charred and lit by red ember cracks. Bolvar's fate would only be discovered by his allies when players would assault Ice Crown Citadel head on, as he had been captured by the Lich King. Bolvar was relentlessly tortured by the Lich King, the malevolent ruler looking to transform the Paladin into a Death Knight that would serve him unwaveringly. While Bolvar resisted the King's corruption, Dranosh Sourfang could not, his corpse raised and put to use by the Lich King as his most powerful Death Knight, who would later be slain by adventurers. His grieving father Varrock would claim his body and give his son a proper burial. During the Ice Crown Citadel raid, players would hear Bolvar's cries of anguish as he resisted the Lich King's attempts to turn him, and when the heroes finally confronted the Lich King, Bolvar's torture-racked body was chained above the Lich King's throne. The heroes, with aid from the great paladin Tyrion Fordring, defeated the Lich King, and it was then that Bolvar made his ultimate sacrifice.
No king rules forever, my son. I see. Only darkness before me. Master's command, the restless scourge will become an even greater threat to this world. Control must be maintained. There must always be a Lich King. Such a burden. It must be mine, for there is no other. Tyrion! You hold the grim destiny in your hands, brother, but it is not your own. Bulva! By all that is holy, the dragon's flame sealed my fate. The world of the living can no longer comfort me. Place the crown upon my head, Tyrion. Forevermore, I will be the jailer of the damned. No, old friend. I cannot. Do it, Tyrion! You and these brave heroes have your own destinies to fulfill. This last act of service is mine. Tyrion. If the world is to live free from the tyranny of fear, they must never know what was done here today. So, there you have it. All hail the new Lich King, Bolvar Fordragon, the only man with the strength of will strong enough to resist the Lich King's urgings and become the Jailer of the Damned. I find Bolvar one of the most exciting lore characters in the Warcraft universe. His story could go either way. Will he succumb to the pressures of keeping the Scourge in check, or will he be a key player in Azeroth's final confrontation with the Burning Legion? Able to mobilise the Scourge to become Azeroth's saviours where they were once its unmakers. And there we have the beginning to Goblins vs Gnomes month. Let me know in the comments and on Reddit who you want to see next. And as usual, check out the artists in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and we'd massively appreciate it if you shared this video around. Till next time, guys. Happy Hearthstoning, and I'll see you later for more Lore of the Cards.